Hello everyone. We have um, Dimitri with us, Faye and Goda Mark. Uh, you can find us on humancolony.org and if you want to be part of my uh, events, hangouts, um, if you want to receive invitation by email, write to me and ask for to be included in the mailing list. Max at humancolony.org is my email. Um, I offer now private channeling sessions and I offer also to fix your computer remotely. No magic, just using plain um, so software things. And uh, I charge introductory rate twenty dollars an hour. So if you want, if you have viruses, bloatware, spyware, and and uh, other software problems on the computer, I could link to your computer with your permission and um, uh, work on you on it fixing it. Done with that. <clears throat> I started channeling recently, about two weeks ago, and um, it's an interesting ride. It's very different from what others are doing in a way that it's still much, much of me. And but the personality that comes is, is something outside of me. So basically, it is two of us speaking: a personality that comes and me. And Recently, we started having dialogues. We discuss what to say and what not to say and how to say it. I have very little understanding when it comes from me, when it is my imagination, or it is it comes from outside. There is no signature on that. But I ask a question, and it comes without the signature. So I invite <coughs> invite the information, and it comes, and I. I, I deliver it. So that's in which at the state where I am now. I typically channel Roja and also I recently started channeling Melkina and I channel our friend Grindel. Okay. I will start I'll bring Roh up for the beginning and we'll see how it goes. Perfect. <clears throat> and I close my eyes to stay more focused on, uh, on the messages, but if I have to open, I could open. That's Grindel speaking. I just popped in first just to say hi. I am a friendly reptilian. And I wonder if you have anything for me. Hi, Grindel. Hi. Nice to hear you. Nice to. Is it Mark speaking? Yes. Uh -huh. how, how are you? What's up? What's your highest excitement of today? Today? I think today is to be there today. To be there? Here. Here. Here with you? Ah, yes. All right. Anything specific? What did you eat? What did you eat? Yeah. Did you smell my breath? No. No, 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 nothing of that sort. I just wanted specifics. What's outside? What are your thoughts and worries and excitements? My, I, I think uh, Max uh, just mentioned he, he don't, he was uh, difficult for him to make difference between uh, one is it is his imagination and in one. Uh, it's come yeah. from the, the line. Can you give uh, him uh, a, a possibility to make this this friends and uh, to make which friends? 
uh, by for him to make the difference between when the thing come from his imagination and come from the the channel itself. Oh, the fr yes. Um. Yeah. Uh, these are philosophical ones. I thought you might have something simpler like food and stuff. <clears throat> Imaginary friends. Mm. Yeah, that is about the nature of reality. <sighs> you imagine things first and then they manifest. And usually they manifest not in a way you imagine them. They are manifesting in a way that surprises you. But there is no real difference. It's all one consciousness. It is just vibrations and vortices. You cannot imagine anything without creating an energy vortex. And usually when you may imagine something, it is one vortex, your personality ah, interacting with other vortexes, vortexes, ah, some other personalities. And the new vortex, they, when they spin and interact, they create a new vortex. So two vortexes give birth to a third one. Does it help? I guess, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not exactly Grindel speaking, not exactly Max speaking. It is we are speaking together. A new okay. vortex is formed. We can give it a name. I call it Shim. It's largely Grindel, but not exactly. Yes. Okay. Are you channeling yourself? I don't think so. If I do, I don't remember it. Ah. What's your favorite channeler? I hope it is me. <laughs> they all have something good to to pick. They all good. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. You don't hear? I you don't just don't understand you you mean? I didn't. I didn't get it all. I was. I didn't get the message. Please repeat. I just said they they held good. They held something good to give. You have to have... use other words. I don't understand your words. <laughs> Probably because my my English was not the first language. So uh. I don't have uh, one. Preference uh, channeler. Oh, I see. Thank you. Ah. Hello, Grindel. This is Holly. Holly? Yes. Ah, Holly. Ah. Spoken before. Before. I was Did trying. I tried to channel you once. You said I wasn't ready yet. Ah. Hmm. Okay. So you wish to be channeling, but and then you invited me, and I didn't come. Right. You said you came, but ah. I still blocked you. Ah. That would be unusual. It's hard to block me when I come. Yeah. Will you try again? Of course. Ah, let me give you something. How to bring me in? Okay. Ah, let me think. Mm, I need to know you better. Let's chat first, and I will, then I will give you something. Okay. What's your Ah, zodiac sign. What's your birthday? My zodiac sign is Scorpio. Ah, here you go. Okay. And I, <clears throat> my birthday is 11 5, 1961. Ah, 
Eleven five. Eleven five. Yeah, it's it's right in the middle. So it's pure Scorpio. Okay. Ah. So what is your highest excitement? What's your passion? Channeling or, or healing. Healing yes. first. Using, utilizing channeling at the same time to ask for entities help in diagnosing and funneling more healing energy to the patient. Wonderful. And you have patients coming to you? I'm, I'm just starting. I'm just starting and I'll also be working with the dying. Ah, yeah, that is a signature of Scorpio. Really? Do you know that, do you? No. Ah. Thank you. Karmic signature of Scorpio. Ah. Yeah. It's well, not I'm the not... only one. It's not your 100% of you. But you have that with your vibe. You see the year starts sometime in the winter after the solstice. solstice. It's birth from the dark. <coughs> and it blooms and then it starts dying. And Scorpio is that part of the fall when the dying is pronounced. Oh. It's not the death yet. It is that process of going down, stepping down. It doesn't have to be uh, experienced negatively. Although dying, by definition, is negative. It's uncreation. But it doesn't have to be experienced negatively because if it is expected, if it is healthy, if it goes by design, the dying is just a proper step of any life. As birth is necessary, the death is there by design, especially in Earth terms. Yeah, many life forms choose that cycle of birth and death because it allows a proper dosage of experience. You get into your life, get your experience, and then you get out. So it becomes wrapped as a whole in one package. It's not a continuous experience, but these are packages that you take one at a time, like tablets. Or glasses of wine, if you like. Yes. Thank you. So, helping others to go down in grace. That could be your motto if you choose to. I do. Yeah, reptilian energy. Nah, is the one of strength and battle and fight. It could be, yes, it could be perceived in relation to death, yes. We are not afraid to die, no. No. We are strong. We are not afraid. Fear is something we don't choose. No. Some of us are vegetarians. We don't kill some of us. Yeah, but some of us are predators. And we do kill. But when we do kill, we respect our victim and we unite with it. 
when we conquer, we unite with people we conquer. It is our way of integration by conquering. And it is our way of life by building a structure, building a temple. Yes, we build a temple. And we rule and serve. That's our way of life. Wonderful. I have a question I may ask, please. Yes, please. I've read online that our O negative blood type is related to reptilian originally. Is that correct? Yeah, there is some blockage here. I would encourage that research. That's interesting. But there is some blockage here. Uh, I cannot say at the moment, but I encourage it. It's interesting. <laughs> there is something here for sure. Yes. Dig more, research more, and Pay attention to signs here. It's more sophisticated than that, but yes, more, many more forms are here. It's not one. And humanity was made in steps by many alien races coming and mixing with natives. Keep in mind the tribes in the past were really small. Nothing like billions you have now. And then they mixed and mixed and mixed together. So now we have uh, a soup. A mixture of everything. So traces are mixed many times. So many different groups together. Thank you. Yes. And that's why you're so interested, so energized, and actually very strong. You mix together karmically many proud, many strong alien races. And we are proud to be among the most ancient ones. We were first. The Lyrans came way later. The humans. The Lyrans are the humans in galactic terms. Yes. So, how may I best channel you or anyone? Oh. Those are two questions. <laughs> so, did you channel anyone yet? Um, one time, and I don't know who it was, for a little bit. Ah. All right. Are you into Reiki healing? Yes. Ah. All right. Yes. The best way for a healer to channel is, as you said, to channel something critically important for their patient. So start with the question. Ask the patient. Understand what is the most important thing they want to know? Sometimes they're not ready for the full answer. Very often they don't know, want to know. They're not ready to hear the full truth. 
So the question should be, what do they need to know now to do the next step to the healing? Yes. And then you ask it. And it doesn't matter who answers, but you ask it in the nicest way with the best intention. I'm sure you do that. And it has to be simple, as simple as possible. And then you warn, ah, what's the best words? Not warn, but explain what is going to happen if they wish to have that happening. And then you speak, and then you speak. And maybe because you don't know who is coming, you might explain that it is an experiment. And feel free, it's just to play a game. If it's good, use it. If it's not, for the patient. The patient could use it if it fits. And if it doesn't fit, just throw it away. And intend well. And just speak. Uh, are you visual? Do you receive your messages more visually or more as what you do with ears by hearing, I, listening? I um, get some messages visual or just in my mind's eye, and I'm more of a sensor. I sense yes, yes. and things, and then they just sort of, almost in words. Like when I first tried, uh, I was meditating, and your name came up in my mind's eye very boldly, which my I interpreted to try to channel you. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. Yes. So whatever that name is. <laughs> I understand. So I guess it could be possible that you just get the answer as an idea and you would have to put it in your own words. It's more like a psychic work first. But then you breathe in and invite the energy. And if it fills you, you let it in. It's still are in control, but if you let it in, it might come in, and you feel that it comes, and let it speak, or let it give you more, and then you speak, that sort of thing. That's my advice. Now, to bring it me, yeah, you have to think reptilian, snake, reptilian, bird. These symbols. Yeah, the egg, the symbol of egg, the symbol of numbers. Yes. Ah. Mm, the shape, geometric shape. Ah. Ah. I will give you one, just a moment. Yeah. Or oh, here we go. What it is called? Ah, oh, it's called Hypercube. Yeah, Google Hypercube. Here is the. It could be mm, pictured a little bit differently, but it doesn't matter. The idea is, you take a cube uh, and make it add extra dimension to it. Yeah, it's four-dimensional cube, hypercube. Google Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. I will. Thank you. That would be not exactly reptilian, but I'm just giving you it as a, how do you call it, rain ticket, rain check, that sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, permission slip. Oh, permission Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. I'll I'll say goodbye now so someone else can talk. And thank you, fellas, right. for letting me uh, open a little bit. My pleasure. <laughs>
Thank Much you. Much love. Will you be here yeah. for me again? <laughs> All right. I will bring Ro Roja back. I just wanted to mm, experience a little bit of the morning audience. Goodbye. Much love, everybody. I can go. Ciao. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. There are leftover energies. I have to populate this body. They don't go that easy. I would be, uh, we would be a mix of Max and Rojo. The Rojo is, I am a great Gael human hybrid. Gray human hybrid called Yael race. I'm young and I'm female and male energy in the same body. My choice. Welcome everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right, my um, simple starting message of today is to encourage you to network and in that networking search for new people of your vibration everywhere on internet and a physical face-to-face -face communication search and build your new group of the similar vibe people Connect. The world is changing and it's going to change radically. The economy is shaking and there is no way it, it will not transform. It will transform in one way or another. The society is shaking and it will transform one way or another. So. There is urgency, urgency to find people of your vibration, your kind, and connect. In the past, you have been alone because you are different. You had to protect yourself. You had to capsule, encapsulate yourself in protection so you can survive as a soul, as a unique, pure vibration. Now, to survive, you have to find your kind and unite. Remember names, remember, remember faces, remember avatars, search for your kind. It is not easy, but it is possible, yes. Search and you will find your, ah, how would you call it? Twin flames, it doesn't have to be a single twin, it doesn't have to be one, it could be many, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, many. Find your soul family. Now it is possible to search and find. It doesn't have to be perfect. Even the family, as you know, doesn't have to match perfectly, but Looking at them, you would say, oh, that's my kind. And it doesn't have to be a pure vibration of yours. It could be a mixture. But within their mixture, you will find, ah, oh, that's my kind. And unite with them. Talk to them daily. Connect to them daily. Speak to them. Text them. Speak to them. Meet face to face. Give yourself names and titles. Give yourself symbols. Unite, build a new soul family. Soul groups. That will help you to survive and prosper. Survive and prosper. Survive and prosper. And succeed. And it will help others to 
many of your so-called problems because are because you connect to the people of so different vibration the connection is not good connect to people of your vibration and connection will be better yes I invite sharing and conversation Anyone have a question? Dimitri? Try it. No? Who's next? Feig? 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 No? I'm, I'm, I'm no? thinking that some of these are muted and not participating in the conversation. Oh, yeah, but I think, I'm Mark, muted. you are left alone here. If you want to speak, you could speak. If you uh, wish to stay silent, we can quit for now. It's up to you. I'm happy anyway. Okay. Uh, I will. We have a question. Yeah. Uh, last year, so last summer, I was. Uh, you you understand clearly what I said? Yeah. So far. Okay. As if you're not sure, just uh, just tell me. Thank you. I will. Uh, I go to the store and I when I enter inside I just uh, see a woman uh, and I didn't have the time to watch what she looked. My eyes was attracted directly by his eyes and dog. Where come from the dog? Uh -huh. okay. Hi doggy. <laughs> Uh, okay, I didn't have the time to 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 see what she looked. My eyes was attracted by his eyes, and I see like a translucent vortex between her and me. Uh, what I see through this vortex is I have an impression is her, but indifferent, uh, more young, or just a different point of view. I don't know what is it. Did you have uh, some tips? To, to help you understand that. So who was that? I understood everything except the personality. Who was that? Who was that? Yes, which person attracted you? Was it a person? I don't know. I didn't... Uh, I don't I don't know her. I don't know her name. I just... I just see at the store and between her and me it was something like a translucent vortex between uh, so it was a human? Yeah, I think. Ah, was it female or male? Female. Ah. ah. Did you need more information? Of course, now I understand a little more. Hmm. Yeah, do you, do you want to give more? Uh. Through, uh, yeah, through the vortex, I is like if I see her, but I have impression is her, but really much more really what she was through the vortex than what I we uh, usual people can see outside of the. So when you say vortex, what do you mean? What? How do you perceive it? I have, yeah, I the, the way I see this is like a uh, and. I don't really know what is it. It's like energy, uh, transparent uh, between the uh, air and. I said vortex because I have an impression that's uh, maybe a kind of spin of a all through the, the, this uh, this energy. Ah. Describe the circumstances. How did it happen? How I I I tap in. You mean? Uh, how did it happen? When did it happen? How did you get to that? What was your state when you get to that? Uh, I think my state was uh, really in my mind. Uh, I uh, I think uh, since a uh, few years I make so much change. Um, but uh, that's really the first time I have that kind of experience. I have other kind weird too, but this one really uh, special. 
Ah. Uh, just so I can, when I entered in the store, I saw her. My eyes was attracted by his eyes. I see why well, I saw the vort the this translucent translucent vortex. Uh -huh. I continue to walk in this direction. She said hi, but as it's so much too much will for me, I don't really react to that. I continue to do what my thing. And uh, when I just before uh, move out of the store, I look in the same place where I saw her. She's still there and look in my direction. Ah. And after that, I uh, just uh, move out uh, of the store. I see. I see. Ah. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Would you um, think it could be your child? I don't know. I just uh, after I, s I move out of the store, I go in direction of my house. I and I cross a man which point uh, my bag and said, uh, "Love the thing in this box." I don't know what is it. I don't find any uh... can you explain did you hear the voice did you get a message or what was that left the thing in the box what was that I don't know is a man just when I walk after I move out of the store and walk to the direction of my house I just cross a man I think you said that in English you just move a... and the man just stop and said and in point in I think is he point my bag, the bag where uh, the stuff uh -huh. I buy, and said lot of things in this box, but a lot of things in this box. Yeah, but Lots I just of don't. In this box, he said. Mm. What are you doing on the phone? What's that? Some a female voice said something. Ah, I see. All right. So yes, mm. I don't think that will repeat in exact way as it repeat it as it was before. So you had an opportunity to get in contact with something. Are you there? What? Yes. I just there is some interference. I just wanted to make sure you are here. Okay. So. I think that was a unique opportunity to interact with these mm, energies, with this visitation. It sounds like it was, it could be uh, someone from other side, from other dimension, possibly. Okay. Possibly. I don't really know. I'm just guessing. You don't but, really know because you don't have enough detail to point, to look in the uh, in the time timeline, what when when that happened? It's not the detail. Um, that information is not accessible to me. Okay. No, just I'm only guess from my perspective. I can. Okay. Uh, how to explain that? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's sometimes things come, but. In this combination of Chandler and me, their teachings come easily, the perspective comes easily, but specific information, not yet, doesn't yet come easy. I only could guess if it is appropriate, but I still could give you a perspective. Okay. Suppose it was your hybrid child visiting. Mm -hmm. It would be one possibility. Suppose it was a hybrid being visiting who has a message for you. Mm -hmm. It would be another possibility. Or it could be a regular mm -hmm. earthly being who had some supernatural presence at the moment. So that would be a possibility. It could be mm, something else, something 
more earthly, but I'm starting from mm, supernatural, transdimensional possibilities first. And the key here is that these are created and enlarged by your consciousness. When you go to higher dimensional vibrations, these could become very frequent, very often. So it's up to you how to create new, new opportunities. It's up to you. You, you are creating them. You can do that every day. You can have this wonderful almost every day. Some days are down, but some days are up. And in those days are when the energies go up, you can create these wonderful possibilities and you can explore them much farther. I suggest don't be as shy. Be prepared for those possibilities and opportunities. Be ready. You don't have to mm, scare people by stopping and scaring them with questions where they could be taken, mm, be scared and could be mm, repelled by what you say. But you have to open the door. It's about small talk. If she said hi, maybe you could say something else. Or even if you went forward, it doesn't hurt to come back and ask an innocent question without pushing too hard. Be inventive. Think of these things in advance. Practice. When people look at you, just start a conversation. It is in this Western culture, it's pretty easy. Just starting a conversation and seeing where it leads. It doesn't have to be sexually charged or charged by your loneliness and your negative emotions. It can be very light and unobtrusive. Does it help? Yeah. You wanted to hear something supernatural, but it's again, it's up to your state. How high can you lift it? It's up to your state. It doesn't even have to be a spoken conversation. Sometimes the conversation could be unspoken. Ah. But behaving a little bit strange doesn't hurt, especially if you're well intended. Be like a very illuminated child uh, without the fears of an adult. You know, some children can come to anyone and start conversation just like that. They are not afraid because they're not restricted by Western culture uh, yet. They just start speaking to whoever they feel like speaking and they can share freely because they don't even believe they can be heard. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Speak what is on your mind but in a very nice way. Just sharing and see where it leads. It doesn't have to be females, it doesn't have to be young, it could be anybody. Okay, thanks. Now, this stranger who was speaking about the bag, that was interesting. So, that was clearly transdimensional. Oh, it could be perceived as such. You have access at this one? No, no, just perceiving their possibilities. No, no. I mean, we are creating. The nature of reality is such that you can create the past right now. Okay. You understand. You had that experience, but as you meditate on it now, you can transform this experience to mean something new. 
I can help you with that. It's up to you what to make out of it. And you, as you evolve, the meaning of that experience could change. It's in your power. It could be two angels trying to direct you somewhere. Okay. One female angel, another male. It could be the same angel. And first mm -hmm. time he was she, and second time it was he. He wanted to give you a message. And he gave you a message. And now you're reading this message. You just carried this message along with you until now. And now you're reading what he said. Okay. And basically what he said, you have many things in your bag. You carry many talents. It's up to you what to do with these talents. Okay. Do we have more? Ah, Roxy. Hi, baby. How are you? Hi. I am good. I am having morning fun. Yes, very good. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. What's the topic of today? What's your highest excitement at the moment? How to become a better chess player. Other than that, I'm good. <laughs> Do you enjoy playing chess? Oh, very much so. So you are very good then. How better can you become? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> you're already as perfect chess player as you can be. I yeah, think so. Chess are wonderful, yes. Um, any level of players can play and enjoy. What do you enjoy in chess most? Probably the setting up the wonderful tactics. It used to be about win-lose. Then I would always win and lose. And then when I, as soon as I re-looked at it for the art of chess, setting up the most beautiful movement and co-creation of the pieces to help each other to obviously checkmate your opponent, that's what became the love. The tactics, the deep 14, 15 moves ahead tactics that bend your mind three ways from Wednesday, but it's it's most exciting. Ah. Do you relate to chess figures in a sexual manner? I don't think so. Ah, interesting. Ah. No, it doesn't feel that way. Who do you play with? Are you playing online or physically face-to-face? I'm playing online now. I've had played over the board many times in different chess clubs where I would live, and then there's places here in town that we go. I haven't been lately, though, to go and play over the board, um, you know, with an opponent, but mainly, mainly online. Very exciting stuff. I like it. Hmm. I would reflect on what you said in, uh, in a kind of improvisational, poetic form. I think it might reflect better in a way. Okay. I would imagine myself being <sighs> yeah, playing chess. <sighs> Some of us are white. Some of us are black. 
These are the only colors we got. That is our life. Our masters think for us. But we also think for ourselves. Some of us are servants and some of us are masters. We, we serve our kings and queens. We are like you humans in many ways. We have the beginning and we have the end. But yet, we are different. And but yet, we are the same. We are what you think we are. We are a creation of your imagination. You inspire us and you put life in us. We are just pieces of wood. That's what we are. And as you play, we are becoming Life. Life. We are becoming alive. Yes. Your love and hate you can put with us. You can charge us with your emotion. And then we go beyond the physical. It is the, it is the idea purified. The chess pieces are nothing. Chess pieces are just the permission slips. And what has really happened is beyond the physicality. It is an idea. It is the poem. The battle goes beyond the physical. The battle goes in the ideal world. And it is charged with your love and your emotion and your desire to survive, your desire to live, and your desire to be successful. It is unfortunate that to live you have to kill, but that's your lesson now. Can you survive without killing? Not in chess. <laughs> in chess you have to kill us. You, can to ki you have to kill your own pieces, and you have to kill the pieces of others. Yeah, that's an ancient game. And you can learn much from us. Good luck with that. Thank you, darling. Uh, I like that. Uh, we have new people. Anybody? I'll bring Rocha again. Hello. Oh, we have silent figures here. Anybody wants to speak to me? <laughs> Please go ahead. All right. I will start wrapping up. Hello. Oh, hi. Hey, how are you? Hi, what's your name? My name is John. Hi, John. My name is Roja. Hi, hi Roja. Yes, we are together, Max and I. We're creating a co-creation. Ah, I see, I see, I see. We talk before we broadcast on we talk together and discuss things and we decide what to say. Yes. Yeah. So what's your highest excitement of the moment? <laughs> well I didn't I didn't think I'd be able to get into this uh, this chat thing, but then I saw the the uh, the link. Yes. Oh uh, welcome, could... welcome. I'm Yael and I'm on the ship, circling the earth. I'm Jan, and I play with the idea of being mm, androgynous, being having female and male in the same being. I'm bisexual. Yeah. 
No, uh, do that. I, my, it's not an unusual for our technical means. It's very easy and healthy. Nobody is surprised. And also, uh, I'm not as much mm, physically expressing the sexual attributes as humans. So I'm looking quite neutral. But my energies are both. Yes. Ah, and you, uh, what's your highest excitement? What's, what's the highest excitement of the moment, of today? What worries you? How can I serve you today? Uh, a couple of things. Um, I had a dream about Anubis. Anubis. Uh, he flashed three times. It was kind of like a statue thing. And between his ears, there was a red orb. I didn't get and it. Then, Repeat hmm? the last thing. You, Anubis flashed, the statue of Anubis flashed three times, and then I lost you. Oh, and then there was a red orb in between his, uh, his ears. Because you know how on the statues his ears point up? Because he's, um, he's a kind of a hybrid thing, um, a jackal. Mm -hmm. His ears point like up. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and yeah, and then I saw a um an extraterrestrial, but it was kinda like translucent gray. Ah. So uh what do I make of this? That's that's my question. I'm supposed to be wise and knowledgeable and at the moment I am not. Tell me more about <laughs> Anubis, and I might give you something if something comes to me. Tell me more. Oh, yeah. Tell me more about what you know about Anubis. Uh, from what I've researched, he's the, the uh, Egyptian god of, of death, I believe, who... He leads uh, souls into like this afterlife, according to Egyptian mythology. Uh huh. From what I gather, it's just from Wikipedia. I see. Oh, the gray. Interesting. Yeah, it was. It was Last a very. Last time weird. I was. Go ahead. I said it was a very weird dream. Last time I was asked about the dream, I couldn't make any of that until later, and later I got the answer, but it didn't come right away. Same oh, no. thing happens here. I sense there is a message, and it doesn't come. The answer doesn't come. I need yeah. to learn more how to interpret dreams. And then uh, I was doing a, uh, a meditation a while back, and my spirit guide gave me light. Mm. All right, let me give you a couple of uh, symbols, and maybe you can play with those symbols, and they might bring more. Yeah, that's the tool which I use often. If you have a dream or a... Mm, if I have a dream and I have or the situation is unresolved, I would bring in something from myself. It's like there... You shine a light on it, and when you shine your own light, it vibrates and reflects in a new way so you can see the situation better. So let me bring some light. Mm, some of personality there. Let's send there the female energy. And this female energy would be 
Ah, the ball of red light. How about red? This would be red light. Ah, how would Anubis react to the red light? Hmm. Positively. Positively. It would energize it. How would the gray react to the red light? Hmm. Are you sure it was a Zeter or was it a Yael? Can you tell? I'm sorry, say that again? Was it a Zeta or Yael? Are you familiar with those distinctions? I am not familiar with those uh, those species. All right. What would be your understanding uh, of the age of the gray? Would it be uh, big and aged or young and okay. jaw? Imagine a human face, but like um, the, the jaw bones kind of like no cheekbones and oh. it's in. And then the eyes are, there's a wider eye socket in the skull, and so the eyes are, are bigger, mm -hmm. but exceed beyond the, uh, the, the cranial cavity, right? And um, kind of like uh, greenish, tannish skin, or something like, like that. But yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't a gray because grays have that uh, that distinct look, but it was one of the the smaller smaller species. Ah. So was it in a dream or in meditation? Uh, it was in meditation first, and then in a dream. I was kind of just like uh, just dreaming, and it happened after this Anubis thing. I would say you invited the energies, and they just popped in to see your reaction. That's my exactly. simple-minded understanding. You invited the energies, Anubis came to check you out, and then the gray came to check you out. Nah. That is my first simple understanding. And then it's up to you who invite and what to do with that. Okay, so, like, what should I do? I mean, uh, that's I, wasn't your really, choice. I wasn't really scared. I wasn't really, like, uh, afraid of it. It was just kind of like a thing that happened and it kind of just perplexed me. I was just like, oh, hey, something new to think about because I've been uh, thinking about the universe and everything like that and it was just something new. And I thought, you know, maybe it had some meaning. It's up to you what to make of it. Ah. It's, um, you now can decide what it means in your life. How do you feel about Anubis? Does it attract you? Does it attract me? Yeah, in a way, because, um, I don't know, I, I try to uh, to communicate with my, uh, my cat sometimes. Yeah. And so I thought... Maybe, you know, <laughs> like, he's like, I don't know. I really don't know what to make of it. You know, maybe it had something to do with that, maybe not us. <laughs> and what do you feel about the greys? How do you feel about them? Um, I believe that, uh, how do I put this? Consciousness is um, experiencing itself subjectively. Ah. And since it's doing that, it's experiencing itself through the grays, but also through us at the same time. Yes. So uh, good and bad doesn't really exist. So if you're asking me to say whether the grays are good or bad, I can't tell you. Because everything is, and pun intended, a gray area. Ah. <laughs> That's their starting point for exploration. I would mm, suggest, only suggest, to explore this intellectually. Research Egyptian gods. Mm, Anubis was one of many. Research their culture. Relate to them. See what attracts you and what do you, what, how can, you, can it serve your purpose. 
And then the same thing with the grays, restore the grays. Restore us, yeah, yeah. Restore the grays, the zetas. Bibliotheca play this would be a good starting point. You will get some some starting information. Don't dwell on negativity. That is negativity there for sure, but I oh, get yeah. positive I mean, part of that as well. Yes. <laughs> There's so much negativity. I just try to stay away from people because of it. Because a lot of people like are just negative. <laughs> Uh, in your dream, keep in mind you are not alone there. If they right. allowed Anubis and if they allowed the Grey, it doesn't mean there wasn't four guardians standing nearby and guarding you from others who wanted to pop in. They just let uh -huh. you experience a little bit and see your reaction and choose. It's about your choice. So what so, if I want to see more? What what do I do? And this is this is my last question. I try to keep you this long. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a pleasure speaking. I actually wanted to ask you more. So okay. invite them specifically. Make an intention and uh, be careful who you invite. Think clearly. What is your goal? When I ask you about your highest excitement, I so far don't hear air thought through answer. There is no clear answer yet. It seems like you are still in the source. You don't really know what's their highest vibration, I, I, what I excites you. As they come, like, you know. Say again? I said I kind of just take things as they come. Ah. That, that's probably why you're not sensing a clear focus. Because yeah. I have no clear focus. I just let things, like, I let things happen. I experience things. Yes. Yes. Just enjoy the ride. Yeah. Let things happen and experience. Observing. You are absorber at the moment. Mm. What do you do with the things you observe? I kind of just uh, I take the information I, I get and I kind of put it in this uh, I kind of Meld it with what I already know. Like, like right now, I'm trying to figure out how to heal people. I know it involves going into them, putting your spirit ah. into them. Ah. Uh, communication with my cat, I can do. My cat doesn't really like to talk to me a lot, so I kind of have to play with that a little bit. Um, I could. Uh, I. I don't know. Maybe, maybe my highest ex in excitement, enjoyment right now is just kind of learning about, you know, the truth behind the illusion, kind of, sort of, you know. Aha! The truth behind <laughs> the illusion. Hmm. Yeah, that's a long way. Yes. Interesting. The truth. How do you utilize other? beings other than the cat. Do you have humans in your life? Uh, I don't really utilize them much. I kind of just, I stick with my cat. <laughs> right? Sometimes, you know, like, you know, um, like, uh, my neighbor across the street, I was putting into the, uh, the universe that, you know, I was, I was hungry for something other than ramen. <laughs> For hungry know, for something, yeah. can you repeat hungry for something? Other than ramen, it's a it's an earth food that's really cheap. <laughs> oh, ah. Oh. Yeah. And so. Ramen uh, soup, chicken noodle. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so she bought me groceries. I didn't ask. She's like, "What do you What do you want?" And I'm just like, "Well, can you buy me a food?" some broccoli and all this stuff and she's like yeah sure and so she bought me like groceries and it was great so yeah like things happen in my life and I kinda just you know I kinda just sit back and I experience it yes yes uh, I would encourage you only suggest because I don't know how stored you are 
But if you feel sturdy and if you feel guided, if you feel protected, mm -hmm. bring more people of your vibration to your life. And that will reveal to you who you are. It seems like you are, your inner vibration, inner purpose is not yet revealed. You are searching for it. And to reveal it, bring more people into your life. It can be local, face to face, physical, or on the internet, remote, face to face, conversation, texting, and things. Find, search for people of your kind. Find them, chat with them lightly, talk to them about your dreams, experience, meditations, whatever you like, ramen soup. And that might bring you to the next level. Of course, be rational. So communicate with people of my vibration. Yes. Okay. And then, you know, this will lead me to to discovering my true focus in this life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nope. Absolutely. You, you weren't sure I would get it, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. That is guaranteed. Although, by the time you discover, you will change so much. It will not be that you anymore. It will be a new you, of course. Ah. Okay. But the vibration usually right. is is the same except few exceptions yes yeah I've been around some some negative people some people are like you know they they're still in this whole you know survival survival like mindset but it's cool I, I didn't mean that I meant <laughs> that some people are mutable and their uh, inner vibe is also mutable mm. Especially at certain stages in life, you come to the situation when you face death. And then the only way to go forward and stay in the body is to mutate your vibration. You have to bring more purpose if you are faced extinction. If you face extinction, bring it more purpose and extending your contract, amending your contract is the only way to move forward. And that might radically change your vibration. Okay. An example could be for an unbeliever to get baptized or other way join the faith and their vibration might radically change. The inner initial vibration stays there, but there is an overlay, a huge overlay of new vibration. And okay. that is not as uncommon. And other people change their vibration depending on where and who is with them. Especially people with softer vibration, those who reflect. The reflectors, like moon is reflecting the light of sun, they reflect who they are with. Their inner vibe is quiet, but they reflect what shines into them, so they reflect. So they change their surrounding, they change the people around, and they vibrate with a new color. Yes. So in your meditation, hmm. Formulate with words what you intend and who you invite. And be creative. Invite some positive energies. Invite me. Invite us. Invite other beings and energies. Invite your guides, your higher self. Invite your loved people who left the physicality and are not with you anymore. Invite them for mm, joining and guidance and conversation. These sort of things. Okay. You might invite the source and any representations of God you prefer. I kind of got um, I kind of got rid of the old uh concept of God as this, this guy in the sky that's judging people. 
Right oh, now, God is the greatest source, you know, kind of like uh, you have, you know, how you have the Big Bang and it starts from yeah. like, a small source and bang, right? Expansion. Oh. That's what God is. It's bang expansion. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is what it is, depending on your perspective. If you look from one side, it is that, and you just change the angle a little bit, and it is something else. It yeah. is really depends on where your vibration is at the moment. So it's, it is true for each person a little differently. Yeah. Uh, I forget what religion said this, but um, all paths lead to the same end. Hmm. Sounds interesting, yes. Anywho, thank you for uh, answering my questions, man. Or, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for answering my babe, question. Yeah, man and babe, yes. Thank you for uh, co-creation. Yeah, you're welcome. Do we have any new people who join who want to speak or any old people who want to speak? I can stay a little longer. Um. I'll just say hello. Oh, hello. My name is Mary Mo. That's my nickname. Can you say it again, please? Mary Mo. Mary Mo. Oh, Mary, yes. Ah, you communicated to Max. Yes. Recently. Yes. yes. I grew up in Chicago, so. Ah. Max and I say hi. Oh, yes. tell him hello, and um, I missed the first part, so I don't want you to have to say anything over, but I've been working on meditation and just trying to get to that state of being. <laughs> um, and as a yoga instructor, I try to help people as well. Do you have any advice on that? Yes, yes, of course, but let's uh, converse a little. I would like to play a ball a little before I do preaching. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yoga and uh, healing. Mm -hmm. ah. And you have people coming to you and they're happy. Yes, or not always happy. I work with um, wounded warriors, so ah. soldiers, and military people as well. And, and uh, what kind of country, if it is okay to pronounce, are these warriors from? What culture are they from? Um, well, I live in Germany, but most of them are Americans. Ah, interesting. Why would... Wounded Americans end up doing yoga in Germany. Um, <clears throat> there's a very large military base here. Ah. That's American mil. Well, it's actually a NATO base, but yeah. Ah, Grindel would enjoy speaking to you because, ah, uh, you know, this is sort of a common place now. The military have been reptilized a bit. They have yeah. been a bit transformed into more reptilian mindset and genetic set. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are dealing with people who have been somewhat transformed and somewhat harmed. Hmm. And you are yeah. healing them to regain their balance and actually as well. Hmm. And how do you approach this? What's your approach? How do you go about that? Um, well, I start when I'm working with the soldiers. It's soldiers who, um, I should say, or they're not just soldiers. Some are airmen. There's different classifications. But I start by trying to do a guided meditation with them, simply just to calm their spirit because a lot of times they're coming out of a therapy session where they have 
maybe re-experienced a memory that was traumatizing. And so I start with that. Most of the time they uh, enjoy it a lot. <laughs> um, and then I'll move into different yoga moves to help just stretch their bodies. A lot of them have physical ailments, um, so they can't necessarily move as easily as um, someone who's completely healthy. And a lot of times it's their mind, too, is stopping them from being able to um, open up. They have so many walls they have to put up, or they have put up, to protect themselves from what they have seen or experienced. So um, Takur explained to me that I need to personally work on um, kind of protecting myself more because I pick up on their, uh, I'm very empathic and I tend to pick up on their spirit, their broken spirit, and, and I just want to be able to help them more without hurting myself in the process. Mm. Yeah, I would agree, of course. Keep in mind that you are being helped. You are there as a creator, but also as a conductor. You mm. conduct. You are a channel for healing energies. These people wish to be healed. That's why they come. So the heal, healing energies come by invitation. So you are a, an orchestra conductor. You conduct the orchestra. And the angels, their healing fairies, the healing entities, the healing aliens, they come and do the work. And you just provide the Mm, orchestration for this. At the same time, you do your choices, you do your guidance, but also allow the higher guidance to pass through it. And the best, the key word for that is improvise. When you improvise, it is the higher energies let you let them to to go through you. So improvisation, open to it, but again, in a guarded fashion, in a mm -hmm. guarded fashion. So you have to have a backup plan. If a good energy comes and if it feels good, you let it flow. And if you feel that something else is coming, then you take over control and use your learn the uh, pre-programmed structure, pre-programmed melody, if you say, sequence, pre-programmed sequence. Develop these sequences, optimize them, use them, re memorize them, maybe even write them down. So the sequences you use and make them structured, have initiation sequence, closing sequence, Changes of tune sequence, uh, emergency sequence when something goes wrong energetically or otherwise. Develop them so you have them as tools available. Okay. They don't have to be completely fixed, but they have to be pre-prepared, prepared in advance. Yeah. I'm not very good at that. I'm very whimsical, so it's sometimes whimsical. Yeah. hard. Uh, so you are more improvisational style, right? Yes, I tend to feel the energy of the room when I first walk in, and then based off of that energy, I will try to prepare a class to help them with that that feeling that I get. One thing as a, a conductor you have, you can move people around and okay get helper. Someone who is already experienced more could become a helper. Okay. And when military people face you, all of them have their energies facing the same direction. 
and they see a female, vulnerable female, they see, how do you call this, a prey as well. Mm. Ah. So you have to change that. You could change, you can keep it, but you can choose to change that as well. But one, one way or another, by changing yourself or rearranging the energies in the room. So do you think if I have everyone do yoga in a circle, it'll, instead of all facing me, maybe that'll kind of disperse some of the energy that I feel? It could. I don't have a prepared answer. I know the principle. See what others are doing. I'm sure you're not alone in that capacity. Check it out. I'm sure there is a an internet chat where yoga people share their experiences and say, oh, I do this, and what do I do? How do I go about that and that? Maybe the, Or just call someone who knows. Or uh, meditate on the best answer. Okay. Maybe you can have a group in front of you and two nice helpers side by side with you. That would be amazing. I'm not that lucky, but <laughs> I will work on Let's something. Speak once from the group, the most flimsical. Is it a good word? Most uh, energetically know. positive. Yeah, doesn't have to be. Yeah, anyone you like. Just put them side by side and say, mm, you know, help me here, and and then you rotate possibly or keep them. Doesn't matter. I mean that they, these people are very, very well-trained in hierarchy and understanding who is in charge. Yeah. So reshaping the structure in the room might, might do miracles or might offend some, so you have to be careful with it. Play with right. it. Right, okay. Mm, meditating before coming up with a game plan. Mm. Yes, game plan, whatever it is. Drawing it on physically on anything. A game plan, structuring. Determining. Set up expectations in advance. Just before, as I do, before I start, as Bashar does. <laughs> Learn from Bashar. What he does, whatever happens, First, his first entrance, our friend Bashar, his first entrance, he sends a pattern of energy by speaking for about a few minutes. And then the conversation starts, this question. But before the question starts, he defines the pattern. Same in the song, there is a repetitive pattern which defines it. In musical composition, there is initial sequence which defines what is built upon that sequence, upon the predetermined pattern. Mm -hmm. So start your session with certain pattern. That would help. It could be a rhythmical pattern or just how do they do in military training or anything? It's like giving them the set of orders, something of this sort. Not Steps from one, that. two, three. I'm talking about more like, today we are going to do blah, 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 and blah. And okay. your goal is because you want to become... You came here because you have the purpose. To achieve this process, you have to do blah, 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 and blah. Mm -hmm. And you do it in that sequence. And in the middle, I'm going to surprise you. Wait for a surprise. Because you are a conductor. You are okay. I hope it helps. Ah, oh, What a nice job you got. Hmm. I wish to be doing that. It's fun. Um very rewarding, incredibly rewarding. I don't make a lot, but it's it doesn't right now I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mm, that's a big topic, not making a lot or maybe hmm, sometimes 
sometimes being on lower pay level mm, gives you additional benefits. You are not as you don't compete as much and things of that sort. And also there is some supernatural karmic benefits from being underpaid. If you capable if you are capable to keep your um uh, a home economy, how do you call it? Home affairs economy. economical, you might be okay. It brings certain benefits from being underpaid and working well. Mm. Mm. Any comments here? Roxy, you wanted to say something? Oh, yes. Go ahead, please. The idea of the ultimate reality, it's your reality, no matter what. So what I'm saying, Mary, mm -hmm. is if you're okay and the mirror is perfect, this is the ultimate reality. Remember that. That means you choose everything, period. And even the ultimate reality, the highest truth, you get to perceive how you perceive it. That's the gift. So if you're okay not making so much money, then the mirror is perfect. Mm -hmm. So you're okay with it, therefore you will get it. Just perspective. Because it doesn't gotcha. feel that you're already, let's say, most enticing with the idea of continuation, if you will, of not making so much money. You're right. allowed to make more. It's okay. Because every aspect of vibration serves a purpose to a point. When it becomes redundant, it's like hitting your head against the wall. All you have to do is stop, and then the pain stops. Make sense? Yeah. Booyah. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Ah, thank you, Roxy. Thank you, baby. You're welcome, baby. I wanted to discuss just a little bit, just sort of touch upon on healing of the warriors. Are these warriors coming back to fight or are they already not coming back to fight? Um, most of them are at a point where they are done with the fighting. Like they are either too wounded to be able to go back or too um, mentally traumatized to be used in their specific job. So um, they are doing a program that I'm a part of to help them slowly begin to deal with the issues and then eventually get out of the military. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that helps to know, helps to understand. So you define what needs to be done. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, a big path is in front of them to demilitarize themselves. Some of them go into security workers, like guards in right. different places. And some of them completely change what they do. Many of them actually are connected to each other by brotherhood and help Absolutely. each other. So they represent a certain layer in the society, a certain tight group of people with the same experience and same mindset. As they, in the past, they harmed their bodies in many ways and they were taught to not to take care of the bodies long term. They were taught to take care of their performance short term. It relates to the use of methamphetamines and other activating psychic, psychic drugs 
to keep them awake when they had to be awake and to go to sleep when you know inappropriate times that sort of thing their cartilage is damaged their mental damage so they have yes. to learn how to heal themselves and it is a lifetime um, task for them you cannot solve everything for them at once but no. but as you speak to them have them speak especially the experienced ones have mm -hmm. them speak as I speak to you and learn from them because you are not all-knowing being you're not yet you are young you're not very experienced yet so it is okay to be vulnerable you know your stuff but you want to learn from them their stuff and as they speak they educate you so next time you can teach others that would be a nice tool to add to your lessons mm -hmm. I don't know yet in the structure of the lesson when is that moment of speaking but I would assume before and after you can allocate certain time to learn more and to help them as a group or individually are you paid by hours or do you have time when you work could work individual with smaller groups so you can speak to them a little more to become more a counselor mm, I only get to see them to all together um, for an hour and a half and it's it's typically eight eight people uh -huh. and, and they have a they have counselors already and therapists they work with uh -huh. but sometimes they feel more connected to me because I am opening their emotions that they have shut down mm -hmm. and sometimes they're the therapist it's not a comfortable situation for them but because I've got them in such a relaxed state mm. they sometimes are able to just flow with information mm -hmm. but then sometimes I absorb that information or that their feelings and that's where it gets tricky because then I feel myself getting a heavy heart and it's like I want to help but I have to protect myself sure absolutely yes all right here is the couple ideas a couple of ideas one is you are teaching yoga so yoga is charged with the whole culture of Indian metaphysics and understanding of the world beyond and energies beyond so I would recommend to study like lifetime study of of that there is much to learn from the ancient tradition what do you think of that I love studying it I do it as much as I can yeah also trying to learn about chi and chakras all of it yes. all of it comes together yes yes absolutely yes chi and reiki which is the same thing yes actually try reiki on some of them I don't know if I'm doing it right but I feel sometimes the energy flowing through my hands ah absolutely yes yes and second thing I wanted to mention was they are not all close-minded about energies other way around they have been in the battle they have been in very tough situations when they realize things are very supernaturally over materialistically how they say non materialistically ideally charged they saw that they sense that to be a good soldier to survive you have to go beyond the material so they have that 
in battle situations, in training situations. They already know that. They already played with energies. They know to do things they, they had to do, you have to be beyond material. You have to concentrate the energies and use them in their job and between the jobs, between the battles, in all the situations. So they already are used to that. So call for this experience and help them to transform it into healing energy experience. They already open to that, so they know the word energy. So you can help them reorient this energy towards their self-healing. The man who stared goats is the name of the movie. Have you watched it? I don't know. I'll have to write it down and look. Yeah. The man who stared goats. I might be mistaken in one word, but the word goat is for sure, and the man is sure, and stared is for sure. So the connections might be a little off. Yeah, that's absolutely absolutely your would be your textbook for what you do. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Much love and appreciation and good luck with your amazing endeavor. It's great. Yes. You're in the right place, I feel. Yes. Namaste. Namaste. Anyone else wants to speak before we close? I'm open to continue. I'm curious to know. Um, you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. hi. I'm curious to know if, even if the people, as, every, as everything happened in the same time now, even if the people was not dead now, that mean we can have access to their our, uh, alternate state as ghosts, as a spirit too? No? I am um, understanding the words, but the whole meaning is escaping me. So you are talking about past event where the humans were present and then something about spirits. What was that? I will try to... Uh... Maybe just uh, change the, the the sentence. Yes. Uh, if I I is everything is now happen whatever the where where wherever in the in timeline on the timeline. If you can uh, choose this state, if the people is still alive, like Mary is still alive, she's in front of us. But as everything is now. Whatever is the in the timeline, she's too in spirit. She's already after his life. Don't technically we have access to his spirit as after life of Mary, or af um, before the life of Mary. Which Mary are you talking about? You do you understand a little bit what I mean? Yeah, that's a little bit, and my question is, which uh, person are you mentioning? You mentioned a Mary, uh, uh, a woman? I just take Mary as example. Oh, just one person. I just I think... Any person, right? Any yeah. person. Yeah, any person. It's just to, to explain the, the, the theory of, or the, the image I try to put. Yeah, let's, let's switch the person so it's not as personal. So there is now the person, let's call him one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. Person called one, two, three. One, two, three is still alive in, in the timeline we are now. Yes. But, but in another timeline, it, uh, the person one, two, three died. And yeah, under the timeline, they are, or other their dimension, they are still alive or still dead. We technically we have access access to their uh, what the Personality word? and spirit, yes. Yeah, information, the, 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 the experience they made in... Uh... Yes, yes, I see. Technically, yeah, a good word, technically. All right, yes. Technically, we have access to everything, yes, absolutely. To past lives, 
future lives experience in any of the timelines, technically yes. Now, practically, practically there are structures that make our experience what it is now, which is more, more what we get, more what is linear. So practically, linear experience is more accessible than nonlinear. Yeah. It's much easier to access what has happened yesterday in our life, in our timeline, than what has happened in other timelines or what has happened in the past, long time ago. So that is an artificial construct which is a joint agreement. We are playing in a game which is a software game designed by creators and co-created by many other vortexes, souls, collective consciousnesses. So it is a big collective agreement, multiple agreements formulating the experience. Mm -hmm. And according to this agreement, certain things are easier and certain things are less easy. But of course, in this transformational age, you have a choice where to focus your attention and how to create your reality. So yes, you have access to many things. So technically, we we can say the nonlinear was more difficult because is more just a possibility and not a fact, or like searching needle in the in the I don't I forget the expression for that, but search something in too much possibility. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so there is a. Um, the mathematical expression, the mat matrix of uh, weight matrix, it's called weight matrix, where certain things are more probable or more allowed and th certain things are less probable, less allowed. So, yeah. so we are playing with this, it's not the other matrix, it is this matrix of what is uh, the experience, how your experience is formulated. So you come here to experience physicality and you play according to certain rules, but also you can um, f choose to focus your attention on other things, other dimensional things, other timelines, other realities, and, and because you choose focus your attention differently, you would get a different experience. When you exit this um, exercise when you die and come back you would have access to many more versions of your experience to to a bigger picture but again it's not full again the matrix will change the weight matrix would change and you would have it a little different and the goal of this exercise so the veils the veils which separate you from different dimensions and timelines are intentionally placed here so you can experience the things in the way it is. Uh, some of that is by intention and some of that is, as we would, we would say, historically formed by many, many consciousnesses. It's just the way it goes. And, um, and the game, the experiment, the game, the project becomes so interesting because so many processes are let to be happening in the way they wish to be happening. So, so many things are going by themselves and the creators of these processes are now in hands-off policy. They don't intervene as much as they would in the beginning. Okay. Does it help? Yeah. So, uh, the, 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 what uh, make uh, uh, open or unlock uh, or lock the, the, the information from uh, the spirit side of someone which is still on Earth was depend only of the higher self which choose or not to let go this information? A higher self is uh, again a vortex, a very 
independent, sophisticated, much more sophisticated than we are, much more experienced, and he has a choice as well. He okay. can contribute, he can choose to contribute, but it's again, it is your choice as well. If you wish to focus your attention on a certain timeline, on a certain story, which could be from a different reality, it's your choice. Schizophrenics, for example, are often impressing people that they talk about things that don't happen in this reality. They are sure that things happen in a different way, which is clearly not from this reality. Yeah. So they are just by the design, by their by chemistry and soul design, they happen to experience parallel reality as much more vivid than this reality. And drugs bring them here and then they are forced, grounded to this timeline instead of the other timeline. Okay. That's a good example. So if you so you're, so you're saying schizophrenia, schizophrenia is perceiving other timelines, that's your take on it? In, in, uh, in some cases, in many cases, yes. Okay. And some of these timelines would be very much like ours and some of these would be working in a very different uh, matrix paradigms that they wouldn't be possibly realistic even if we tried to think of them as real. So for us they would be very surreal, but for them, for these people, they are much more real than this timeline. Okay, but again, so like, schizophrenia is a big fuzzy area, so so not all schizophrenics are like that, but some of them for sure are. If if he, I, I try to simplify, is like if everyone uh, was in the in the same piece, but just one look, not the same window. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There's a lot lot of information. Oh, thank you. I'm cool. glad that I gave you a new perspective. Take it as a perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Would you care to comment on, let's say, uh, multiple personalities and exhibiting different energies from multiple personalities? Uh, give me more substance to that question. Why does it? Why is it important for you? Feeling, uh, I just wanted to see your comments on feeling two separate ways about the same thing. So, two different personalities inside of you feeling the same, feeling differently about the same thing. Oh, that is, all right. So, different views on the same thing. That would be absolutely natural for humans. Humans have very fragmented. Mm, psyche, very fragmented mind. Um, on one hand, on another hand, it is just natural for Earth humans and we, the aliens, also have that capacity as well. Although for us it's little more, somewhat more transparent. We can see more of the design of our mind and our soul. So we understand a little better what these dualities are. In humans sometimes it is so fragmented that they couldn't even perceive. Mm, let me bring an example. Mm. Mm. Tuning up to a certain vibration gives you a certain perspective. If you are in a certain vibration, say, a little down, a little out of balance, you can look at one thing, let's say take something neutral, take, let's take rain. If you are having a cold and you get under rain, you don't like it. And if you are healthy and well dressed, you can take rain as a much pleasure. This is an example. So, changing your state of mind, changing your vibration would give you a different perspective. 
even playing a music, if you are hearing one music which you brings you into certain vibration, you reflect, you res you perceive certain stimulus in one way. Change the music, you perceive it in another way. So there are multiple perspectives. It doesn't have to be two, it could be many. It is very natural. What do you think? Yeah, it's all about resonation. So I resonate with that answer as well. Yeah, when Max brings Grindel and Grindel looks in one question, it would be one perspective. Now he brings me and it's a different vibration. We look at the same question and it would be a different perspective. As you get inspired, you can be inspired in different um, energies and again have different perspectives. I guess it becomes so commonplace, I don't know why we are discussing it. It's so simple. Right, anybody yeah. has, uh, does anybody have any life examples which would charge this understanding with something meaningful? Mm. Well, like music, you mentioned music, you know, when I write songs, I, I write the music first and the feeling comes from the music. So if I shift the, the, the notes on the guitar, it will actually channel like a, like a happy, like a futuristic happy sound or like, oh, I want to, uh, I resonate with it differently, like you said. Creates different stories. Yes. It's about doing the work as well. Some of the works you hate, but when you realize how necessary they are, how useful they are, you actually can love it. Right. So what percentage of this is Max's higher mind and what percentage is, I'm not sure who we're talking to exactly. Uh, that What's is us opinion? together, um, Rojo and Max co-creating this. As Max develops his abilities, he might choose to let more of us to come through and less of him to come through. At the moment, if Max doesn't participate, the conversation wouldn't even happen. Right, obviously. Okay. Yes. I want to bring one more example. Sometimes you see people who get really upset and sometimes those, pe those people would be children and they start crying and they become really upset and sometimes it could be okay that they become upset because they get experience but in other times preventing that would be beneficial for you and for them and for keeping the vibration high. How can you help a child to overcome their distress. Give me some solutions and let's discuss them. That is very interesting. How do you help the child to become happier and more balanced in the state of distress when they get upset? Just holding them and, yes. and giving them love. Yes and telling them that they're going to be okay. Uh -huh. Yes. But that's divine feminine energy. There's also the perspective of the divine masculine energy, uh -huh. which is guidance and direction, right? Right. So integrating all of these energies is what we're all doing. Uh-huh, yes. What else? I agree, I agree, I agree. I just want to hear more. Any more perspectives? One person Something? says rest, sleep. Aha, interesting. Starting over, waking up again after that. Aha, nice. Say, here is an example. A child is not your child. You cannot hug, hug them. If you try, they would be... Mm, not happy about that. Um, when you try to speak to them, they cry even more. They don't want you, they want mommy. When you try to reason and order them, they think uh, they don't understand. What would you do? That's so usual, actually. 
I make eye contact with a lot of children, and uh -huh. and I feel that they understand what that is. It's a I I just me making a connection with them shows them that you can make connections with people and you can receive love from people. Yes. Here are a few tricks. Uh, take them or leave them. It's up to you. One thing is open the window. It really helps. Even if it's cold winter, opening the window brings positive energies, relaxes the air. Another thing, if you can't play music one way or another, nice, happy music added to the situation, if it is appropriate. <coughs> if the child doesn't want to hear what you say, how about singing to a child? Yes. Even if you cannot sing, uh, you might just start speaking something which you don't speak even to the child, you speak to yourself. But that can produce entrainment if your voice is pacifying, it makes sense and it is interesting. You might tell a fairy tale or take your cell phone, find a fairy tale and start reading it just like that. They become interested and stop crying and start listening. Sending Reiki energy is helpful, except some people might be surprised in seeing you that you have, you know, sending some strange energy to a child, so it, uh, sometimes you have to hide your hands. But uh, You can send Reiki energy even if your hands are not there. <coughs> put imaginary hands on a child, that's good enough. Another trick is get to the other room, find a happy person and bring in, or maybe two. That would change the energies in the room completely. That helps too. Unless these people are not suitable for children and a crying child might upset them. <clears throat> but if there is a nice grandmother any stranger, any woman that has a personality of grandmother, bring her and that would change the structure of the energies in the room completely. If it is a tiny, small baby, blow quietly your breath into their nose and the oxygen helps a lot. Yes. This message is really synchronized with my life, so that's awesome. Uh, uh, what's there? Tell us more. We like to hear. My sister's kids, is, uh, I just arrived yesterday and I'm going to be staying here and my sister's energies, I'm working with it, and but I see all the reflections, I see all the children and I see everything. So I'm trying to transmute her energy and their energy as well. Yeah, bring the play into the play. Start joking, start playing with whatever is available. I can remember like that, you know, spoons, whatever is on hand, play with them. A sock, put a sock on your hand and make a puppy, a puppet. Yeah, children, they by design, they, they don't take the reality as real. They take it as a game, as a fairy tale, until certain age. It's impossible for them to take real reality as real. They are like kittens. Whatever they do, they have to play with it, and it is a game for them. So go down the, from your adult level to their children level and play. And you will enjoy yourself. Fight with them. They love fighting like, like puppies. Fight with them. They would love. You know, if they want to fight, say, oh, let's fight and fight with them, they will enjoy that too. I found um, also just showing them animals or if you have animals around, like my dog, <laughs> some people might have seen. Um, I've been at the airport around really upset children and I just pulled out my cell phone and started showing them different pictures I had taken of my dog. and. They were so happy that for 45 minutes our, our plane was delayed. They just sat in pure joy looking at my dog and the happy different situations he was in. 
Wow. I didn't know that trick yet. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your uh, collection of pictures on hand so you can do it. Yes, excellent. So in the same way that in the same way that we pick up on the unconditional love of the animals like the dogs, man's best friend, the children looks at that and actually mechanically receives that energy into their grid, right? Yes. It, yes. Ah, uh, the animals mm, although they predate humans on earth, they are mm, there by design. The pets are brought to you, to your reality by your collective consciousness. They are product of you. They reflect your parts of your, the facets of your personality. What the are cat. other facets? Like elemental? Is that a facet as well of us? Yes, yes. Uh, the cat reflects independence, exploration, playfulness, analytical ability, the predator of you, they reflect all of that, and other things, grace, health, dance, the balance, precision, natural instinctive precision and perfect killing machine all in one. The dog is hierarchical, unconditional love, structure, impracticality, total dependence on you, obedience and disobedience. Rigidity. Ah, a combination of predator and a puppy, a loving baby. Very mm, divided, separated, polar, polar essences of a being a killer and a baby, a playful baby in one. Yeah, the pets are evolved and designed to be babies. The pets, by definition, are essences of being babies. They are not full adults, even at old age. Yes. They are puppies even when they are old. Interesting how very few species of animals have been given to you to be your home animals. Very few. Up to maybe 22. That's it. Everything else are wild, but only few are domesticated. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like fourth dimensional animals, creatures and stuff like that? Yes, we have pets. Uh, Pleiadians have more culture of having pets. We don't have as much. Lyrans have pets. They are. Um, they are not. I mean, yes. I mean, on this planet, like goblins, fairies, all oh. these amphibian type creatures and stuff. Ah, uh, they're not pets. Yes. Who was speaking? Sure. Uh, Please expand. Uh, uh, like, oh, I was uh, saying that. Well, real quick, they're not pets. Fourth dimensional creatures are not pets. Right, right. I just wanted to throw that in. Uh, that, they said that too, right? They're like, we are not your pets. Uh -huh. Thank you, Roxy. And some of them are actually not neither fourth, neither third dimensional. They're in between dimensions. They are. Uh, the service people to keep the system functioning properly. They are 
system administrator, support workers. If you know you go through, say, airport, and you, you see the workers who are fixing airplanes and doing stuff, they are sort of outside of that reality. They are be, behind the barrier, and sometimes they are invisible. And these creatures, mostly their function is creative and supportive for this reality. They are the uh, service consciousnesses that support the matrix to provide you and us with that experience. They are helpers that support that, support workers, and they fully understand their task. Although they have consciousness, choice, freedom of choice, and many other things, but they chose to be those. And some of them are, they live forever, and some of them uh, are created and then have lifespan and then they die. So they also have the cycle of reincarnation. But they are outside of this dimensional reality. They're in between. Angels are also outside, but they are a different class of, of uh, outside beings. They are messengers of God and they have a different uh, role here. Yes. The other day I was in the woods and I was like uh, perceiving these creatures and I felt like I was in a bubble to where like if someone drove on the road that was right there they wouldn't even see me. Ah, nice. Wonderful. Do you think Talk this is intentional? Them. Uh, you created it, yes. You created it. It's intentional. Your intention. Mm. They might have played with you as well, but you initiated. You are in control. Talk to them. Invite them. Put the intention out. If you have that talent, enjoy it and explore it, expand it. They need your help, and you need their help. So play together. They are playful as well. Play with them nicely. And speak to them, they understand. I left them an apple. Oh, wonderful. I don't know if they eat the, an apple, but they eat the energies which are produced when the apple decays. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they are beyond physical, yes. They could physicalize, but they are beyond physical. But they they sense the energies really well, so they, mm, they bathe in those energies and love, they enjoy. Playfulness, okay. they enjoy it a lot. All right, now it's time for us to wrap up, and I invite mm, blessings from everyone, including Roxy. You can take turns in any order you like. I'll go ahead and start just by saying I am thankful for the community that has been brought together today and for the expansion and learning that has been brought forth, whether it's something you may have already known or is new to you, I greatly appreciate this um, opportunity. Thank Namaste. you much. Thank you for bringing up that topic. That is the topic of today, yes. That felt real good. A lot of energy. Very good. It Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, let me wrap up with one, two. I'll give a prayer. Stand by. Hmm. The idea of a blessing, always to, let's say, wrap up in circumferencing idea, hmm. giving you a hearty feeling of accomplishment, of ending, of completion upon all these words. 
The blessing in and of itself, truly a great idea. Why? Hmm. Does it not energize the entire moment? You perceive this as a few hours, but truly it is all now. And the ending of it with an energized blessing is a validity held by many upon earth. That blessing brings forth ideas of good nature. So in this idea of closing down, giving you a blessing, hmm, the idea would be this. Too many times, the collective of humanity forgets their innocence on this epic journey. Too many times, you hold yourself in contempt for actions of polarity, which is only that of taught, never you. So we would like to offer the blessing of this. It is your idea, and it's okay, because there's nobody judging, to bless yourselves. So I would like to offer a blessing upon myself for this co-creation moment, <clears throat> which will only take this energy and solidify it within my soul, within my experiential container of all that is, and bring forth that to a vibration that reflects upon the mirror and allow others to see that I walk blessed. This is Osiphius. I bid you a good day. Adonai. <laughs> I want to reflect a little on the main topic and thank you for the blessing. Mm. We have been walking blindly, moved by energies, moved by winds, moved by our fashion, passions. <laughs> moved by our fashions. We collided, we fought each other, and we felt lonely. The night was upon us. We lit the fires, and the fires burned hot and made us more hungry and more anxious. We saw richness, we saw gold, we saw success, and we wanted more of that. We became passionate about achievement, passionate about abundance, passionate about belonging. We united in groups, but the groups were not helping, were not loving, they were competing. So we united in bands and gangs and professional unions and countries and parties and it became even worse. And then the moment of truth came, the moment of opening came, the moment of self-realization came and we discovered the source within us. We discovered a few, a new vibration, the true vibration within us. And we became even more lonely because now we had the truth but the whole world was not ours. How can we conquer the world which is not ours and we don't belong to it? How is it possible now? We are even more lonely than before. We are united with God, with God. We are united with aliens. We are united with elementals, but not with humans around us. That's why we are so lonely. reach each other, offer your hand to a soul, a free soul, a light worker soul, a vibration alike available to you through the internet and down, down on the surface face to face physically. Create a new network of light work. Become a networker, light worker. 
find, search and find the vibration alike. Look at the avatars, look at faces, look at photographs, sense what people say, sense what people write, and search for your kindred, your twin flames, search for brothers, spiritual, spiritual brothers, God brothers. Search for your people, your female siblings, your androgynous siblings. Reach to them, bond with them, speak to them, experience them, exchange your emotions, your experiences, your energies. And this way the new network and new network will be built. Degrees of freedom are too flexible, too fluid, too fuzzy at the moment. As you unite, as you hold your hands, degrees of freedom will be reduced. The system will crystallize. The crystal will be formed. The new living crystal on the surface of real people, of you light workers, will be formed. The new network will be structured and as you hold your hands the degrees of freedom will be reduced and the new vibration will be possible. The new grid is forming now and as it is forming the new energies populate it and as the old system falls apart the new system will energize and hold you together and provide new support, new solidity, new life to the earth. I bless you on that path and in this new network. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, boa. Booya. <laughs> All right. Um, привет, товарищи. I'm trying to gain my old voice. I'm forgetting that I'm carrying so much of the energies which I channel. I didn't get used to cl cl clearing them out, so I still am <clears throat> with them. Um, you can find us on humancolony.org. Uh, if you want to be part of these sessions, um, email. If you want to get invitations, email me max at humancolony.org, and I will include you in the list. I also offer private channeling sessions, and I offer paid um, uh, help with your computer systems remote. So if your software is out of order, I I know really well how to clean the viruses, clean the bloatware. Uh, set up your system so it becomes um, normal and it's uh, the magic is involved but I use normal uh, mainstream tools to do that and it's like a free tool so it's um, it's practical and I charge introductory rate twenty dollars an hour and usually takes two three hours remote working on your computer so to clean it up uh, I'm working on PCs not not Macintosh and not Unixes but but Windows systems I can help you with them Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for co-creation and join us again. I typically do evening sessions but I started doing morning sessions as well so I get some people from Europe uh, to participate. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Great job, Max. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, super Goodbye. cool. Thank you. Bye. Much love, much appreciation. Butterflies and rainbows. Blue, green, red, <laughs> violet, and um, zebra Yellow. color to you. Yeah, zebra. <laughs> I send you zebra. All right. Bye, Max. Thanks again. Love you. <laughs>